Hi, and welcome to season two of Histo Help, NSH's popular podcast that brings tips, tricks, and advice on all those pesky problems you're facing in the lab. Season one was a huge hit, and this season is going to keep the good times rolling. We will be chatting with Histo legends like Cliff Chapman and Maria Buell, Dave Cruel, our unofficial guru on tech, industry partner, and maybe your new best friend when it comes to equipment know-how, Matt Mincer, and NSH members Lynn Grumman and Candace Smoots whose sound tips and advice will really help your lab maintain those high standards. So sit back for a few minutes and enjoy. Hi everyone, this is Connie and I'm here with Matt Mincer, the owner and founder of Tech One Biomedical, which is an equipment servicing company that's been around for over 20 years, which is awesome. Congratulations, Matt. Um, on on call, day in and day out, year in and year out, helping to keep those labs running no matter what or when. Matt and his team are knowledgeable on equipment that I, I like to call multi-generational equipment, um, the technology or the platform, no matter what what generation it's coming from, you guys have that experience to, um, to, to work with it, which I think is really great. And if you're out there listening and you don't know Matt or his team and you want to learn more, check out their website, which is techonebiomedical.com. Besides leading Tech One, Matt loves inventing new histology technology and often cooks full meals for his employees in their kitchen, <laughs> which is sounds like a nice perk. Um, I want to thank you so much, Matt, for being here um, and welcome. Well, thank you for having me on, Connie. I wanted to sit with you today because we have we often hear on our lab webinars or at presentations at the convention um, or really like across the education spectrum that when we're talking about troubleshooting, one of the things that are said often is take good care of your equipment, which is a great piece of advice, but it's pretty vague. So as an equi equipment expert, I thought let's talk a little bit more about some specific advice. Um, and let's jump out of the gate with your number one tip that you often are giving people in relation to keeping the equipment, no matter what it is, in the best possible condition. Well, that's a very good question. Um, the first thing is, this may sound obvious, but keep it clean. Um, I am, I don't follow my own advice. My wife would actually 100% tell you that I'm a slob, <laughs> but, but you would be surprised, you know, the number of, number of, for instance, on a tissue processor, not just running the clean cycle, but also running a warm water flush to get rid of the uh, formalin salts. The knife holder on microtomes and cryostats tends to get debris in between it, at which point your knife doesn't, your uh, blade doesn't clamp very well. Uh, taking that apart and cleaning it will, will fix a whole lot of problems. Uh, the cassette clamp also on a microtome. I'm, I'm about to do a video about this. I, if your listeners don't know, I, I do a video series on that I call What to Do Before You Call the Dude. Um, so it's kind of about what Great. to do before you call service. And one of the videos I'm about to do, or I may have already done it actually, is to take take your cassette clamp off and your blade holder off and run it through the clean cycle on your tissue processor. Not often, but maybe every you know six months or so, and it'll clean out a lot of a lot of the debris that's in there. Um, I can tell you, no no microtome company and no tissue processor company would tell you to do that because it's probably you know warranties and stuff but that's what we do when we when we do maintenance on a machine anyway so those are a couple of a couple of where that's just one good tip is just cleanliness that's a great tip and actually i'm curious um because that is a that is something i i've seen people discuss on the in the nsh block open forum which is our community forum for our members is talking about uh, equipment hygiene do you recommend or have you seen that folks are using an actual like written down schedule or is this something um, that is intuitive I don't think there is a written down schedule it's good it's a good question um, I, I, I I guess my other piece of advice is to read the manual which nobody does including me uh, and it may <laughs> be in there but as far as 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 far as I know no it's not written down anywhere other than you know at the end of the day you're gonna want to you know you clean off the clean the paraffin off your microtome you know all that sort of stuff but I don't think I don't think as far as deeper maintenance um, uh, it's written down in the manual. I'll have to look that up. It's a good question. So you'd already uh, touched on this a little bit, um, but maybe we can expound on it. You know, you're out there in the field working on equipment. Besides taking the blade off the microtome, is there some? Is there another thing that might bigger problems that could be avoided with better maintenance? And what would that piece of maintenance be? Or is it just kind of back to that cl cleaning regularly, like the clamps? 
I, you know, have your yearly preventive maintenance. That's not just me trying to sell my service. No matter who your service company is, make sure you have your machines done yearly. Um, let me add a little caveat to that. If you're if you're using it once a week, if you're a research lab and not using it, you probably don't need it once a year. I'm probably costing myself some business there, but I don't care. <laughs> but if you're if you're a, a, a full lab, you know, have it done once a year. My motto on microtomes is and cryostats is um, it's always the knife holder. So this isn't necessarily a maintenance tip. But but a tip to certainly take into consideration. If you're having trouble cutting and you've got another machine sitting right next to you, take the knife holder off of that one. Don't tell the tech that's using it, but uh, and try it out because it, it, it 99% of problems on microtomes and cryostats are blade holder problems. And, you know, if, if you do find a problem, then you can consider taking it apart a little further than just, you know, the, the, the regular take it off and, and dust it off. So that's that's a big one. Obviously, changing your reagents on your tissue processor, but these, these should all be obvious to anybody who's been doing it for any length of time, can save you a lot of problems. Warm water flushes on your tissue processors can save you a lot of times, a lot of time. Uh, one thing that we do on a maintenance um, on stainers is take like a cup of bleach and pour it down the drain. Uh, don't don't pour it into the into the, into the any of the reagent containers, but just into the drain. What ends up happening is over time, molds builds up in the drain pipe mm-hmm. and eventually can clog and lead to floods. So you know every month pour a cup cup of you know just regular bleach. It doesn't have to be watered down or anything. Uh, your regular Clorox pour it down the drain. And you can avoid some some uh, clog problems and some overflow problems that way. Well, and that's a great tip. And I honestly, I know that we have a lot of folks out there in the field who have been doing this for a while. But there are a lot of newer folks, too. So even though it may seem obvious to, to you or to some other um, more seasoned professionals, I think that somebody who's newer to the field listening to this will really get something out of that those reminders to keep those things clean. Um, and then that's a great tip sure. about the, the Clorox. I'm pretty sure I do that with almost every drain in my house because yeah. I have a little boy who's disgusting. Um, and so those drains get really <laughs> nasty. <laughs> Yeah. So it is a perfect segue into what I'm calling my rapid fire set of questions. So I'm going to ask oh, you a God. series of questions and you're going to need to answer them as quickly mm-hmm. as you can. First thing that comes to your mind. Oh. Now, the first one's going okay. to be a cinch because you already sort of addressed this, but are you ready? Yes. Okay. I wanted to make sure because, you know, I don't want to be accused of being unfair with this game. All right. Question number one, okay. biggest problem with cryostats that you fix. It's always the blade holder. <laughs> easy one. Have you ever found that the problem with the equipment is that it's not plugged in? I drove up to Green Bay once from Chicago, which is a four-hour drive, and that was the problem. It was not plugged in. (laughs) Fair enough. I hear this phrase a lot, user-friendly. What makes a tissue processor, in your opinion, user-friendly? Simplicity. The the software is simple. The software is simple. All right, pancakes or waffles, which are better? Waffles. (laughs) All right, what was the last equipment-related problem you solved over the phone? Oh, Jeez. Um, a refrigeration problem with a cryostat. One of my guys called me this morning. Why would a robotic arm jam? Schmutz. <laughs> okay. Please, you got to explain that more to me because I don't know. Okay. Okay. Schmutz is the Yiddish word for, for trash, for junk. So you get junk on the, on the bearings of those robotic arms and it'll just cause them to jam. Uh, part two, for example, on a stainer, if the rack falls off and and in mid-cycle it'll jam because of that so but the big one is dirt all right schmutz they learned a new word too all right you've ordered some buffalo wings do you get blue cheese or ranch with your buffalo wings i like them al al natural (gasps) wow all right how often should you replace a cover slippers charcoal filter every three months i believe is what the manual says what is something people forget when it comes to microtomes Obviously, I'm obsessed with microtomes right now. Obviously. Uh, some <laughs> people forget uh, it's always the knife holder not to jump back on that bandwagon. Be careful. Uh, Leica has a little magnet on the back of some of their microtomes, and a blade can fall back, get attached to the magnet. You'll reach back there and cut yourself. Yes. Last one. Experience the chip, office- actually. <laughs> <laughs> the Office or Seinfeld? The Office. That's an excellent selection. I like them both. I love them both, but The Office is my favorite. All right. So that's all 10 of my rapid fire questions. Um, Are there any hurting words that you would like to leave our listeners with? Don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call me or your sales rep or whoever your service company in your area is, um, whether it be the manufacturer or the the, uh, 
or, or, or a third-party service company, don't be afraid to, to ask a question is, I think, the most important thing. Um, and the second thing, and I hate uh, – this is something I'm going to harp on. And I, it, if, if you're having a problem with your machine and you know you're going to call somebody, don't do anything with it. Just leave it like it is uh, because often people will, will – come in and you know th- think they're fixing it or think they're helping us out by cleaning up and actually the mess is often a clue so <laughs> that that would be the, another big tip so uh, i think that's a great that piece of advice sense. no it makes perfect yeah, sense so, in based on a lot of the information you gave us you know it way you troubleshoot yeah. is to take a look at the situation and um i know that one sure. of the things uh, that i've heard people talk about is the space that they have around their cryostat so that there's enough like mm-hmm. filters so the air can go in and out and if you are you know yeah, if you absolutely. move anything that was it that was there before and that was the problem how would anybody know so um, exactly exactly or or if you change the reagents on your tissue processor if you know you're going to call somebody in and you change the you think well i'm going to clean this up so they're not dealing with a with a spill or an overflow well then that that's one of the clues that we're not going to be able to see when we get there um and that's true of any any service company will tell you the same thing and 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 the, of course that that depends if you if you are not going to call somebody. If you're going to try and fix it yourself, then obviously you're going to want to clean the mess up. But if you know for a fact you're going to call somebody to fix it, then then leave it as it is, if possible. As long as it's not dangerous, obviously. You don't want, you know, xylene on the floor in the middle of your lab. Awesome. Well, Matt, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you being with us today. Thank you. Okay. And and one one final note. I I do a workshop at some of the state shows, if anybody is interested in... in, uh, and uh, me doing it at their state, uh, their state society shows. I've done it for the tri-state, uh, Wisconsin, Iowa, um, Minnesota, and I've done it several times at the Illinois show. So all offers out there always. Thanks so much, Matt. Well, you have a really great day, and um, we appreciate your time. All right. Well, thank you for having me on. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you have a tip, trick, or piece of knowledge you'd like to share, let us know. We would love to feature you on a future episode of Histo Help. Have a great day.